hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> When you're gonna do it, hey? We're not talking questions like what your usual people are asking, like Rob Tebbett or Coogan Cassis. We're talking real boxing questions. So when you're gonna come and do it, Eddie? You've got my email. I'm gonna send you my new phone number today. Give me a ring, Eddie. Don't you be a bottle job. Where would I put Carl Frotch as the greatest super middleweight? Yeah, like you're hardcore, so where would you, as a boxer? Uh, you'd have to say that th this, this, it's a three sided coin, isn't it? Carl Frotch has beat more world champions, former, current, and future, as a super middleweight than any other super middleweight in history. And he did it in less fights than anybody as well. Now, Andre Ward beat five, didn't he? A lot, lot less than Carl. And Carl Zaggy beat nine. Right, nine wins over world tag champions. Nine, if you count Peter Manfredo, who won IBO middleweight, but we'll count IBO. So he beat more than Carl Zaggy and more than Andre Ward. He fought Andre Ward and lost, right? We know that. Andre Ward never fought outside of America in a title fight. You know that, don't you? I know that, yeah. He only fought twice outside of America, and that was where he was, his dad was from. I think we were in some island or something, in, in Jamaica or something like that, it's Grenada or whatever. So Andre Ward's not got a passport, so he's going to want it all his own way. So he never came to fight Carl Froch in Nottingham, but he did win the first fight. We know that. He's got an horrible style, but I don't think Andre Ward's five wins of a world champions entitles him to be above Carl Froch, even though he beat Carl Froch. Andre Ward didn't fight Dyril in the Super 6 who were undefeated and he didn't, who were undefeated before the Super 6 and he didn't fight Lucian Boutte after the Super 6 which was the agreement. So that with Andre Ward there's a lot of question marks about the Super Middleweight but he did beat Carl Froch which I've said three times now for all you gimps who stick it to me over Froch. Joe Calzaghe, I know his record off by heart, I know the fighters that he didn't fight, he pulled out the Glenn Johnson fight three times he didn't fight Tarver, he didn't fight Jermaine Taylor. He didn't rematch Robin Reed. He went life and death with Robin and won a split. Froch knocked Robin Reed out. Froch fought Kessler in Denmark. Joe should have fought him in Denmark. They paid him an extra half a million to get him over to the UK, Kessler. So Joe wanted it all his own way, didn't he? Yeah. One guy he did one guy he did rematch was Mario Veit. He knocked him out in England. He, 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 I think it was in a round or something and he rematched him in Germany why? because he knew he'd knocked him out once so he rematched him in Germany but he wouldn't rematch Robin Reed, would he? he wouldn't rematch Robin he wouldn't give him that because Robin Reed had the style to beat him he had the style to beat him he would anybody who's a boxing fan needs to go and watch Robin Reed against Joe Calzaghe and look at the compu box at the end who, who landed the most punches but Look at it and then think, should Robin have had a point took off him in 8th round? Uh, go and look at the fight. One judge added to Robin Reed by 6 points, I think, and that will be a point took off. So, go and watch that. But I thought Robin Reed beat him. So, and Joe Calzaghe vacated on the 270th day rather than fight Carl Frotch. He didn't retire him, he moved up to light heavy. So, I think Joe Calzaghe were protected. Now, we paid an £100,000 fine for pulling out of the Glenn Johnson fight three times. They didn't fight Clinton Woods when Dennis Hobson had an agreement for him to fight Clinton Woods, they went and fought Hopkins, so... But that was like everyone at Clinton, we fighting Clinton. So as far as I'm concerned, Joe Calzaghe 
were manoeuvred through choppy waters to protect his own. Now people are going to go, Bucky! You were saying that because you cobras, mate! Bucky! Look, the moral of the story is this. 46 and 0, how many times did you see him go into a fight where you thought, phew, this is going to be a good fight? How many times? Lacey fight? Maybe Kessler won? That was it. You got two defining fights as a super middle. So I'd put Carl Froch as the number one on the strength of the wins he's got. You'd have to put Joe Lewis and Ali on the strength of what their records are, wouldn't you? Maybe shade it with Ali, but you're not going to put Tyson Fury above Muhammad Ali, are you? When Mahat Tyson Fury's beat Vladimir and Wilder and Steve Cunningham a blown up cruiser in a life and death. You're not going to put him above Ali who's beat 16 world champions plus a lot of guys that he beat that would be champions today like Ernie Shavers, Oscar Bona Bonavita and you know people like that. You're not going to put Tyson above Muhammad Ali are you? Because Tyson's way off that. He's way off Joe Lewis and he's way off Larry Holmes. He's way off Vladimir's record. He's nowhere near. But social media can make things appear to be a lot bigger than what it is can't they because of hype and things like that and people getting carried away and gassing people up but in the cold light of day look at Ali's record and Larry Holmes's and Vladimir's and put them next to Tyson and Joshua they're not even on the same planet are they? So I think social media has a big part to play in it but getting back on that I'd put Carl Froch number one I'd put Carl Zaghi number two and I put Sven Ocker number three on, or Kessler. I think they both beat nine, did they, world champions? Like Carl Zaghi. But a lot of Carl, a lot of Kessler's wins and a lot of Sven Ocker's wins were Kala Sauerland handpicks. Who will have him? He's a former champion, looks good for TV. But there were a lot of fighters on the slide. You go through Carl Frotcher's CV, go and look at John Pascal. Right, John Pascal. I'll start off with the world champions at his beat. Brian McGee. He went on to win WBA. Danny Frotch fought him in the British and Commonwealth, knocked him out. He went on to win WBA. Robin Reed, yeah, he, he were a bit past his best. He worked former WBC, knocked him out. Sorry about that, Robin. Uh, John Pascal, Olympian, undefeated. Frotch beat him in a tough fight. He went on to beat Diacono and Dawson in his next few fights and be Laniel at 175. And he's still a world champion today, 12 years later, am I right? Yeah, you're right, mate. Jermaine Taylor, Farocha's first defence in America. He'd only lost to Pavlik and he worked mandatory. Joe Calzaghi's first defence, a goat herder called Branko Sobot. Do I hear silence from the Calzaghi fans? <laughs> So, you see where I'm coming from, don't you? And it's that sort of pattern. Jermaine Taylor, Frotch beat him, right? Probably ruined him. Five years later, he was a world champion. Do you see where I'm coming from? So it's not like he's beating bums. Then you go on to Arthur Abraham. Frotch schooled him, didn't he? He went on to win a world title again and lost it and then won it again. Do you see where I'm coming from? Kessler. See where I'm coming from? He, he, he's another one, Mikhail Kessler. You know, Frotch had a life and death with him, but he, he went on to, to lose his title to Ward, but win it again, and then Frotch took his belt off him. Who else is there? There's other people as well who, who've gone on to do good things. He beat Darrell, didn't he? He ended up being IBF interim, or were he regular, or whatever it was. Who were other one? George Groves. Four years later, he were a world champion after Frotch icing him. Do you see where I'm coming from? These are people who are at the top of the game. I think five of them, five of them uh, 11 top wins he's had, I think five of them are undefeated. Uh, or, or is it six? Or did Abraham be defeated or rate disqualification? You'd have to check that out. Point I'm trying to make is they were death row after death row after death row. The only one you couldn't say were death row were Yusuf Mack and he were IBF number five and that were an Eddie and Gimme fight. And he got cut down like cheese, didn't he? So, if anybody wants to have a pop at me, yeah, have a pop at me, but Carl Froch were box wreck number five and six and Ring Magazine. I'm not sure which one it were, Ring Magazine number five or number six. Or box wreck number five and number six. It's on Wikipedia. Go and look. Point I'm trying to make is, 
he's got the best resume out of, this, out, out of all of them. The best resume, yeah he lost to Andre Ward, but that's Andre Ward and he's got an horrible style, hasn't he? But he won't come out of America, would he? To come back for a rematch. At least Kesler gave him a rematch, didn't he? Shout out Michael Kesler, he's alright. But Frotch is the man, so go on the next question. Boxing casual, they'd have him at number three, wouldn't they? They'd have it. Carl Zaggy number one, Andre Ward number two, that's how they'd do it. They'd have Frotch at number three. Fair enough. Um, next question. Do you think Josh Wells' career could have been managed better if he was with Dennis Hobson earlier? And would his 90 feet be not fired or less instead? He was with Dennis earlier, but they left and went elsewhere. I don't, I don't know, I think that uh, Josh was a great little fighter, I seen him yesterday because so it was his dad's birthday, oh you enjoyed your birthday cake Mick, I hope you blow your candles out. Uh, Josh is a great little fighter isn't he, he's a dedicated kid, they've had no Robert Green but they won't kiss ass will they, they don't go to any after parties, they're not ass kissers, they're, they're, proper, they're proper people, so, so as far as I'm concerned, I don't know if Dennis would have made a difference, I mean, Dennis is my pal, but I don't know if I don't know if uh, it made much difference. I don't know. I, I think a lot of it's time, and I think Josh has had a lot of bad luck, and they've had to take fights at certain times, uh, and being a way fighter. But he's been with us for four fights now, and he's four and zero because he's the home fighter, and I think he needed that. But what next for Josh? I don't know. Hopefully that. It, We'll be able to get him a fight and deliver for him, Steve Crump and Dennis. They'll be able to put the money up and get him a, a, a an eliminator or a world title shot in the next 12 months. But I don't know. I hope so. So I like him. I like the whole family. They're good people, good boxing people. But like I said, they've had no give. They've had no give them. So I hope that Dennis and Steve Crump can deliver for uh, for Mick and Josh. Yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know, he's had a good win, that he beat that 28 and 1 guy that nobody in England wanted to fight, and when the fight were made, I think I said to Dennis, God that's a tough fight Dennis, that, and he went, well we've got a roll dice haven't we, and they yeah. rolled it and Josh beat him, so in a, in a career best win, 28 and 1 kid, so, so we're, we're going to see aren't we? We're going to see, but we're robbed for a European title, and I feel sorry for them all out there. Even Steffi Bull, who delivered for them. I mean, to give Steffi some praise now. Yeah, I feel gritted teeth. He delivered for them, didn't he? And they got robbed, didn't they? So you've got to say maybe Josh is a European level fighter, but he got robbed. But at featherweight, he's a different animal. Punching harder. He's a 12 round fighter. Trains hard. He was training yesterday. We can run like the wind. So we'll see, but I wish him well and I'm behind him. I'm Team Whale. Well, I only signed him, didn't I? <laughs> I think, I think, like I said, I think, um, I think Dent's probably starting to believe in Josh now, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Well, I, I hope so. Good. If not, if not, they'll be, they'll, uh, his contract's up in April, so Josh's oh, con April, his contract's up, yeah. I don't know. I'd like to think that they'll 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 sign again. I mean, this epidemic's put put a lot of uh, problems our way, and it not being able to deliver and fights getting cancelled and that. But I think they'll sign again, hopefully. But I don't know. It's not my decision. That's the decision that Josh and his dad will make, and they'll weigh everything up. But it's four and we're about, so he'll not be short of offers, will he? Yeah, he would have. He would have been fighting for a, 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 an eliminator. He would have. Would have done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Eliminator. Okay. Yeah. All been well. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Ah, fair enough. Um. Okay. Next question. Um. WBC might promote Dean White as WBC champion. Obviously, of um, Tyson Fury as a franchise champion. What's your view on it? I don't want to hear any of this franchise champion. I just want this to be one WBC belt. 
and the rest of them are just top 10 contenders that's enough for my head I don't understand all this yeah. other stuff it's just diluting it I remember watching Ali on Michael Parkinson they were on about Joe Bugner and they said well I'm the champion and you, and you can't hammer Joe Bugner he's the number four guy in the world in the whole of China Russia Pakistan Australia whatever Poland England Scotland look they have a number there's a champion and there's a number one contender and up to ten and that's how I think it should be I don't want to see any of this other stuff but TV have it, want it don't they they need, they need belts on don't they for, to, to attract sponsors and they've got the mindset that uh, if there's a belt sponsors will want to be involved and it's mainly for that but I, I want it to go back to old school the, uh, old school so I think well they did Ken Norton didn't they in the 70s and did he defend it against Larry Holmes yeah they handed him it they give Ricky Burns Frank Bur Frank Warren give Ricky, Ricky Burns a couple of belts like that didn't he or it one belt like that he gave Nathan Cleverly one Enzo Macca and Ellie one they got handed belts Nathan Cleverly got a world title because Jürgen Bremer couldn't his bail conditions wouldn't let him get on plane so they'd upgraded him, Pakel Varsel upgraded him at WBO, oh it's okay, he can't fight so we're going to say you're champion. Dennis Lebedev, WBA upgraded him didn't they, Scott Quigg had a draw and held belt up didn't he? When he won the belt, he, he, he drew on the night and held, I thought what's Scott Quigg doing and Eddie went, oh no, he, 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 we, 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 he, were, he were declared world champion yesterday, today's his defence. What? They make it up as they go uh, effing long. It is utter. <laughs> Take precautions. It's bullshit, mate. How's Scott Quick been, Dave? Scott Quick, I don't know. I hope he's peeling spuds in his granny's chippy near where my mate Frank lives. With Tatey Rumbler. Go on, Quiggy. Chips and bits with plenty of salt and vinegar. Yeah, of course he does, yeah, the Mac he won't, but he's got his ear, hasn't he? He's in his ear. He's in his ear all the time, isn't he? Of course he is, yeah. And you know, he's Eddie Earn's match room, isn't it? Eddie Earn is match room. And Matt Schumer behind Joshua, aren't they? They've got all, they've got all them sponsors, so yeah. He'll be, he'll be pulling all the strings, but making out he in. If he isn't pulling strings, it'll be, and Joshua goes to him for advice, he'll take it, won't he? But whatever advice he's been taking lately is not very good, is it? No. Well, that's another no. issue. We'll not, we'll not go down that path. We'll just sit and watch news tomorrow, won't we? Uh, yeah, I think his weaknesses are his chin, uh, basically. I mean, I'm not going to get into boxing terminology because I'm not a trainer, am I? Uh, I'm not a, not a professional, uh, fully qualified trainer. But you know, I think that, uh, in my opinion, I think Joshua has had some fist against Ruiz, and he's frightened to death now. I've heard sparring stories where they weren't engaging and they were backpedalling and maybe he might be working on a style to protect his chin. A bit like Vladimir. Vladimir oh, yeah, was like yeah. that one and it took ages to get his confidence back and the confidence might come back in time but Joshua's an athlete and he could probably, he could have probably done well at any sport. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For the practice that's it. But I just think that he fought, scared to death in Saudi and I think there's quit in him. If he gets hurt again, I think there's quit in him. That's what I think. I think it's in him. He's quit. And once you've done that, we all saw what Victor o happened to Victor Ortiz. Everybody he'd fought, he'd knocked out or dropped him, even if he got beat or drew. And as soon as somebody put it on him, Maidana, look what happened. Yeah. Quit, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And that's what happens. Uh, it's the schoolyard bully thing. Mike Tyson, he were knocking everybody out. One, he beat nine world champions in his career. But... Can you name them? Or would you say Mike Tyson's best wins? You'd say Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's it, that's it really, 
Larry Holmes were two year on say fat as a pig Michelin man. Michael Spinks were a career light heavyweight. Do you see where I'm coming from? If you've got a cash cow, you're going to protect the cash cow, aren't you? Yes. But Mike Tyson fought in a poor era. We saw what happened when he fought Lennox Lewis, didn't we? But point I want to make is Joshua. He fought frightened in Saudi, and I think until he gets his confidence back, he's going to continue to stink arenas out. He is the new stinkinator. He's the new Akoli, Lawrence Akoli. Sorry about that, Lawrence, but I've been to a couple of your fights, mate, and pff, shocking. Next question. Why is Dennis Hobson going IBO route instead of WBC, WBA? Is it because IBO is easier route for fighters? IBO? Why is Dennis Hobson going IBO route? Well, a lot of people don't know this, but nobody were working with the IBO years ago, and it was Dennis Hobson who started working with the IBO oh, before anybody many years ago. And uh, so he's always had a good relationship with Ed Levine. And a lot, a lot of the other governing bodies, the it's a bit political and the, um, I think um, if you're at other end of the scale if you're not a Frank Moore or you're not an Eddie Earn no more you've not got Ricky Hatton you've not got Clinton Woods you've not got David A and all that you're, you're working with uh, fighters who are British European level and uh, you're going to you're gonna have to find a route for them aren't you and a belt because everybody wants to be known as a world champion so that's probably why Dennis went the IBO route but Backing up a, a couple of years, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I, I got Frankie Gavin on board did you, with Dennis, and uh, it was me who chased it up with the IBO and made the IBO fight for Frankie Gavin. Mwah! And it obviously it, can't, it got cancelled, didn't it, with two weeks to go. My big moment got stopped, but and I, I've always been a big fan of IBO and always pushed it and always said IBO is a great belt because they don't. I know they don't call managers and that, but they're not political like the other ones, you know what I mean? I think IBF's good, they're pretty strict and that, but I don't think the IBO are... They don't go and do what they want. You know, like, for example, the WBA. They've got a WBA super champion, a regular champion, an inter-champion, interim, and a super gold champion. How can you have four world champions in one belt? Well, that's crazy. There should be one champion, and then the next should be one, two, three contenders. They're making it up as they go along, aren't they? Hey. That's all it is, really, isn't it? There you go, and you don't forget these belts that are made by Sontic, they have to be paid for. Yeah. So, and, and they'll be putting their bit on top as well, and, you know, all these judges and that, they have to be flown over and wined and dined and picked up at airports and dropped off and make sure they're all right and everything and that. You know, it's all expense, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's expensive, expensive, expensive. But if you've got money, you can do anything. So, yeah. Um, next question. Is Tommy Frank world class? Oh, well, we haven't got a world class win yet, has he? I hope so. I hope he wins a world title. But who has he beat? Who was world class? Who was his best win? No one really, is it? His best win is that guy from Mexico, isn't it? That's his best win. But, I thought he got beat. Obviously, it got me in a bit of trouble. <laughs> caused, caused caused me loads of problems. And I thought you're the gonna, last... You're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of here right now that you said that again. Well, I'm not bothered, am I? What, what's Dennis gonna do, not pay me? He don't pay me. <laughs> he bought me a very, very, very expensive coat, recently. Uh, oh, yeah, that Dolce & Cabana one, which was a lot of money. Uh, so he got me a coat, but uh, probably because I've dug him out a few times lately, and I. But no, no, he's been all right with me. He's been all right with me. But as regards boxing, when I came on board with him, the deal was I'm there to learn. So and if we do all right, everybody will eat. But we haven't done all right, have we? Yet, yet. But he's all right. But Tommy Frank. He ain't got a world class win. I'm not going to come on here and say he's world class, not when he's knocked Sonny Edwards' fight back. I'd like to see him fight Harvey Horn, but that'll probably get me in trouble as well. Mark Tibbs fighter, two English kids fighting, why not? But, I don't know, I've mentioned it, but they're, they're going to make their own decisions, aren't they, Glyn, Dennis and Steve? But I think that 
He's got to fight Sonny Edwards. Got to do. Otherwise, it's going to be an itch that won't go away. Yeah. If you um, just, this is just like a my, my bit of a stupid question, but like, for example, um, regarding World Cup fighters, if Manny Pacquiao was to go down flyweight again, um, would Tommy Frank, would Ben Rose and Dennis put him with uh, Manny Pacquiao, even though Manny Pacquiao's back his prime and he went down flyweight? Of course they'd put him in with Manny Pacquiao. Do you know why? Because they'd get paid. They'd turn around and say, well, Manny Pacquiao's on sliding, your next big thing, Tommy. They'd try and put some spin on it to try and get it over the line to get paid. And that's just that's just politics, isn't it? It's like asking a politician a question. Have you noticed when somebody asks a politician a question, they say, the answer, they ask them to answer yes or no. They never do that. They just they say something else. Well, that's boxing, isn't it? Is Tommy Frank world class, Dennis? Yes or no? Well, well, uh, 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 well, 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 if you ask anybody in boxing who was Dennis's mate, they'll say, yeah, good kid Tommy and all that. But behind closed doors, they know that they're lying. So tell the truth, then we're all right, aren't we? Tommy's a nice kid. I hope he's gonna win a world title and then defend it 20 times and be world class. I hope. But he hasn't shown me anything to, at the moment to suggest he's world class. He's not even won a British title yet. Am I right? He knocked a British title fight with Sonny Edwards. So how, are we, how is Tommy world class? Come on, what sort of question is that? You know answer. You're trying to cause problems for me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm yeah. the question, you're a little, so the you're little sod. No, he's a good fighter and he's undefeated. He's a young kid, isn't he? Undefeated, what is he? 13 and now, 14 and now or something? 26 year old? Plenty of time, isn't there yet? But no, he's not world class. Sorry, Tommy. Yeah, tell me, I'll give you a little slap. <laughs> Go on. Look, what it is when people put these things on social media, it explodes, doesn't it, and that, and they get stuff off back of it, don't they? People want to be associated with them and they start making money off at the strength of what they've said. Mike Tyson won't be able to do three rounds with Dave Allen. Alright? He'd be on his knees after three rounds with Dave Allen. Dave would walk him down. That's the level Mike Tyson's at. He quit against Kevin McBride and Danny Williams who was shot to pieces. Danny Williams was shot that much then. If he'd have been an horse he'd have been put down. Alright? Danny Williams made Mike Tyson quit. Kevin McBride made him quit. So what's he going to do 16, 17 years later? Eh? Just because he looks like he's got his scent pumped up and all that. That don't mean nothing, mate. I thought he were fighting John Fury anyway, wasn't he, Mike Tyson? Something like that. I don't know. Go on. Of uh, Mickey Theo says he wants to fight him in a bare knuckle now, so it's up to John now. It looks like John's in the right position now, isn't he? I think he's going to bottle it. What, a big travelling fighting man like John Fury bottle it? Well, we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see. I don't think he's a bottle it. He can fight John, and you've got to respect him. He's a fighting man. But the guy's put it on him, and he keeps putting videos out. Big old tough lump, driving around, smoking around Essex in his Rolls Royce. I want to fight John Fury. I mean, what? You could make this up, could you? You must be getting some book sales off at back of it. So I don't know, but I'd like to hope that him and John could shake hands and we could all have a beer and be happy. But who cares? <laughs> Yeah. If so, could he do it in the next two years? 
Yeah, I can see Cash being a British champion if Dennis can plot, plot a route for him. I'd like to see Dave Allen against Cash Alley for the British title, but Dave seems to be putting his name in mix with people like Yui Fury and uh, David Price rematch and things like that, when really Dave Allen's not got a belt, he needs to go fight Tom Little, doesn't he, and get an area belt. Dave's priced himself out, though, isn't he, with his fights? Yeah, well, you can understand that, because, you know, he's already talking, oh, do, 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 talking like Riddick Bow, so... He, uh, Dave probably just wants to get paid now and why not because he's took short end too many times so good luck to him he's a nice lad oh. alright cool um, my next question is you have fantastic knowledge of the boxing man and know your stuff you're trying to growing up people in the boxing industry I'll take it now are you a threat to the establishment am I a threat to the establishment too right I am yeah, I'll stick it to him, don't I? Robert Smith and Charlie Giles, you are gimps from Gimpville Island and I've had your noses in the trough far too long. So avoid me. Yeah, I think that I think it needs shaking up that boxing border control. It's an old boys club, isn't it? And it, it's not sour grapes that Les Potts uh, what wouldn't give me uh, a board license? Uh, I mean, how ironic it is that I'm in front of chief, former chief of police at area for a board license, eh? Unbelievable, yeah. eh? knowing that I got a massive sentence for a section 18 on a policeman. So I think I was stitched up there. Do you know what I mean? But it ain't sour grapes because pff, I'm over it now. But the point I do want to make is there's too many of them uh, these Freemason type people that are hanging around that border control and it needs a shake up, it needs re it needs a new commission setting up and if I win lottery I'm going to get a commission set up and we can do it properly uh, do you know what I mean because there's too many people getting too much there's too much favouritism going on I think I think with board, I don't know I, just, I, I think the weak people, for example there's people involved with fighters who don't have board licences you know what I mean? What are they doing about that? Yeah. They're not doing nothing, are they? I think the weak, weak, weak people, that's what I think. So. Cool. So, that's it for questions for the Alright then, mate, no problem. Uh, I'm not going to put this out today because there's too much going out today, and plus it's, like it's gone into free videos. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to send it to. Uh, Cameron and I'm going to get him to, not Liam Cameron, uh, I'm going to get him to put join it all together, so it'll probably be tomorrow now, alright? Alright mate. No problem, nice to speak to you, you take care. You too man, Thank you very much for coming on, and uh, no. it was a serious grilling you gave me yet again. You think? Yeah, I mean, some of the questions you did, I mean, you know, I've got to be careful what I say, I know. But I, I always look to you like this. If I come on here and I give my opinion and you tell the truth and nobody likes it, they're not your mates anyway. So, like I said, only two people have ever pulled me Robbie Barrett and Anthony Tomlinson. Give them respect because they're the only ones that have ever pulled me. And one of them, I didn't really mention his name anyway, it were other people assuming I did. But the point I want to make is if you tell the truth and nobody likes it, who cares? Make a move, that's what I say, make a move. If you don't like it, they will come to come on the channel and have a debate with me. I say, well, I didn't like that way. He said, well, come on the channel then. If Dean White don't like what we've said, come on the channel, Dean, and tell me then, because you're telling us you've got Dillian's ear all the time, and yet he's a thousand days without a title shot, but yet he hadn't served legal papers after the 270th day cutoff point. So you've left it another two years, which is 730 days, and you still not serve papers on, so you don't want to fight Wilder. So stop going on about it. If I'm wrong, tell me, Dean. Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. Tell me. Because I'm from the Teddy Atlas School of Boxing. You've just got to tell the truth. And then we'll be all right, won't we? Because you don't need a script when you tell the truth, do you? All right. All right then mate, well listen, I've got another guy coming on now, so peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing Big V, don't have nightmares and say hello to your lovely missus for me, alright? Peace out, cheers mate, bye bye. Right.
And that were Big V, that were his story. Brummy living in Leeds. Be a dolly bird. Good luck to Big V. Peace out. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me, porkycorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>